guys, welcome back to another episode of 5 Things That We Learned after a very fun 2-0 victory last night in the Carabao Cup over Graham Potter's Chelsea. It was satisfying, wasn't it? Unfortunately, no glorious return to the Etihad for Raheem Sterling. Sorry, Raheem, mate, but there was loads of good news from Manchester City and loads of talking points. So you expect with games like this for them to be a little bit boring, but that wasn't the case last night, as isn't... One football. One football absolutely is not boring. That's a terrible segue, Stephen. Do better next time. But either way, go and download One Football right now by clicking that link in the description below. It helps supporting my channel and helps supporting your football knowledge. You can get all your stats, all your goodness, all your football information. And it's, of course, going to be a good way to keep ahead of the World Cup as that rolls around in a couple of weeks' time. And you can get all your Haaland stats, your Alvarez stats, and all that kind of stuff, and the transfer gossip as the January transfer window starts to roll into. Do it right now for the big price of nothing and, and nourish your football knowledge. And once again, help support my channel. It is appreciated. Download one football. Do it right now. I would also like to say, please do hit the subscribe button rolling in. Uh, the subscribers will be really useful right now. And please do also give the video a like. It helps with the algorithm, which means the videos get seen more. Massively appreciated. The only place we can really start this video is... I put Ortega number one question mark could <laughs> super Stefan Ortega potentially be Manchester City's number one well obviously the answer is always yes he could potentially anyone in the squad could potentially be number one uh, in their position is it going to happen probably not not because he doesn't maybe potentially deserve it just simply because it takes an awful lot to go wrong for him to be number one but I want to talk about his quality and I think last night was one of the finest goalkeeping displays well pure goalkeeping displays in terms of shots stopping that had seen at the Etihad for an awful long time. People were comparing it to Joe Hart against Dortmund those many years ago and Honestly, I got it. Some of the saves that he was making last night, I'll whisper it quietly, and I, I I mean this with as much love as possible, Edison might have not made them. He might not have, honestly, and that's not me trying to be harsh. He's just talking about what strengths each keeper has and Ortega is known as an excellent shot stopper and there's an awful lot of value of that, especially in games like this, in cup competitions where things are a little bit more frantic. And um, does that potentially mean that you could get in ahead of Edison? Well, no, look, I don't think Guardiola is going to give up on Edison anytime soon. We know what Guardiola values in a goalkeeper. We know that Guardiola absolutely values Edison's freakishly good uh, ball playing abilities and that composure and that consistency that he's had over the years. Guardiola is the kind of person who'll be loyal to players that have done him good and he's not going to abandon him just like that and as he shouldn't really he shouldn't do there's a lot to be said for consistency and you don't just drop a goalkeeper who's not really made any big clangers recently he hasn't maybe the odd goal where you, goal where you go could he do a little bit better than there but not genuine massive mistakes it's a disingenuous to say that he's not going to drop a keeper he's been number one for years just because one backup keeper has a great game he isn't I know some people want him to, but he's not. Let's be realistic. But Ortega did show last night that if Edison doesn't up his game and you know and starts to make a few mistakes or gets an injury, Ortega is very capable of stepping in uh, and claiming that number uh, that number one shirt hypothetically. He really is because he's a fantastic goalkeeper and the quality of some of that shot stops last night. Shot stops is shot stopping. Um, it was remarkably good, honestly. And we know he's good with his feet. Some of his passing was really good too. Like, honestly, that is a quality keeper. And yet again, another fantastic piece of business from Cheeky & Co. A free transfer. Like, what a player we've got here. And what a keeper. And someone who's definitely, definitely going to bring out the best in Edison, if not push him all the way and try and claim that shirt himself. Um... It also, was last night, I just put a new Jack. Last night, it felt like a new Jack Grealish. It felt absolutely wonderful to witness Jack Grealish find his best form. And Guardiola talked about it last night. I'm going to try and find the quotes. But I'll talk about how I did a thread on Twitter. You might have seen it a couple of days ago where I talked about Grealish maybe sometimes being a little bit deferential to his teammates. It often felt like to me when I watched Jack Grealish play football... He was sort of pretending to be a Manchester City player. It's like he'd watched a billion Manchester City clips and gone, Guardiola likes to recycle the ball and keep it and all this kind of stuff and be really cautious and just keep the ball, keep it moving. It was like he was cosplaying as a Manchester City player, but not actually being Jack Grealish himself. And Jack Grealish got this move to Manchester City because he was so exciting, uh, running at people and being direct and trying to force things. And last night he did that. Now, of course, there was a caveat. He was aided an awful lot uh, by an overlapping fullback. Um, Sergio Gomez played out wide, not inverted, which definitely helped Jack Grealish cut inside and occupy a very different space to what he does use at Manchester City. And more like the space that he occupied uh, when he was at Aston Villa. And he massively benefited from it. He was so, so aggressive running at people. And Guardiola did point that out. Um, 
he said, uh, this is what he said about Grealish. Today was the best that Jack has, Jack has done in all the time when he gets the ball or moves inside. He attacks the back line. Always his intention is to pass. And we spoke many times. No, no, no. The first intention is to score a goal. He, he said, Guardiola, it's always to go there. And he's not a real threat for the back four because his body language is, I'm going to pass the ball. Today, the body language is, I'm going to score a goal. And after that, shoot or pass. Today was three or four times that he did it. And this is what we wanted. He didn't score, but he had, a, he had chances. And one day will. He was exceptional. And that's it. Basically, he played like Jack Grealish and not Jack Grealish trying to learn how to play for Manchester City. I do think it's a mental thing with Grealish. I do think it is slightly positional, but I do think that desire uh, to run at people and be himself made a difference yesterday. Fingers crossed we see an awful lot more of it. And fingers crossed we see an awful lot more of Julian Alvarez, man. Yet again, yet again. Uh, I did the maths last night and worked out his stats and so on. And like, it's 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 remarkable how good he is at the moment. Like, I'll just quickly find him again. But he's having such a wonderful start to life at Manchester City. 886 minutes played at City and seven goals and two assists, which works at a goal contribution every 98 minutes, which is slightly over one per game. But it's also quite remarkable given that this young lad, he came from Argentina where he completed a, a full season for River Plate. And then, of course, went straight to Manchester City with no break and played right through in a new country a horrible cold wet wintry country right now not speaking the language properly and it's wonderful to see how well he's adapted and he's had to wait on the sidelines too but yet again last night um, a moment of brilliance it wasn't the finish that was so exciting it was that first time diagonal ball Harry Kane-esque actually how many centre forwards can make the pass by the way not many drilled into the feet of Mares, and then more than that he wasn't happy to sit there and just admire his beautiful pass which he would have had every right to do by the way no it was the way that he chased up that pass and ran straight to the back post and then got there ahead of the defender to get the tap in that is what complete strikers do and Alvarez last night showed the full uh, skill set that he's got that incredible work rate that eye for goal that ability to receive the ball in tight pace tight, tight spaces and dribble and of course that passing range he's a gem an absolute superstar and I love it the fourth thing I want to talk about is how the kids just fit in, man. Like Cole Palmer and Rico Lewis, I'm not saying either of them last night had a superstar game. In fact, they both just kind of had like six out of ten performances for me. But that is perfect. It's perfect in the fact that they just blended in. Cole Palmer last night played yet again as a midfielder. And even though I don't think he had a great game, he did have some moments where he gave the ball away. I can hold my hands up and admit that. And here's me holding my hands up, admitting it. But there were also times where he turned very nicely. And he played a couple of interchanges with Jack Grealish and so on. He did a nice drive and got a shot away. And of course, he pressed a lot more than he usually did as well. There was a lot more aggression to his game. He wasn't quite as passive as sometimes he can be. And yet again, he's still learning to play centrally, where his best position, in my personal opinion, is is out wide on the right. Yeah, he still had a decent game and he blended in and he suited it. And Rico Lewis was the same. I think Rico was a little bit quieter in the first half, but the second half, he was much better. He did get beat a couple of times by Lewis Hall in particular, and he did show the odd bit of naivety defensively, but he also showed just how good he is on the ball, and he also showed that he doesn't really cost the team at all if he's there. And that is the highest compliment I can pay, pay Cole Palmer and Rico Lewis. They just look like squad players, man. They look like squad players who absolutely deserve to be at Manchester City. And if either Rico Lewis or Cole Palmer had to start in the first team in the Premier League game, surrounded by senior players, they wouldn't let us down they wouldn't be this really obvious weak link they are clearly good enough to at least at very least blend in and be suitable and competent for this Manchester City team which is all they need to be right now as they learn their trade it's impressive that these young players are just good enough to fit in at Manchester City not be superstars yet but they don't have to be they're learning and that to me is really really exciting give them a little bit of time you know and before we know it they'll be superstars in their own right and the Manchester lads it's perfect Finally, we really do need Calvin Phillips, and it was so nice to see him back on the pitch. Obviously, it looks like he's going to the World Cup. Has he gone to the World Cup? Has it been announced? Maybe it has as in this. I can't remember. But either way, Calvin Phillips, I'm delighted. He has, actually. I'm delighted for him that he's back on the pitch because Rodri in that first half was blowing out his ass. Rodri was tired, man. He was absolutely exhausted. And Calvin showed what he can bring to this Manchester City team. Tenacious, uh, a wonderful diagonal passer. Uh, of course, a little bit rusty here and there, but we need him because he feels like we've got replacements for everyone in midfield beat. Gundogan or De Bruyne or Bernardo we can mix and match them but we've not really been yet been able to rest Rodri necessarily without you know having to put Gundogan there instead but Calvin Phillips being back would be absolutely huge for City and he is and obviously he's got so much quality and really likeable a really likeable player I do think Phillips could add an awful lot to this team and his general 
um, aura and his general uh, eagerness to learn could be massive for this Manchester City side. We are going to need every single player in the second half of this season if you want to complete our objectives and try and win a few trophies. And Calvin Phillips could be a big part of that. It isn't just there to challenge Rodri, as Guardiola apparently told Calvin himself. He's there to challenge all the midfielders. And I think that's really obvious um, that given this running, he's going to be needed. So good to see him back on the pitch. They have five things that I took from the game. Guys, do let me know down in the comments what you made of Ortega. Can he be Edison's new rival? You know, can he push him out? Uh, Jack Grealish, excellent in my opinion. Alvarez, of course. Palmer, Lewis, starring, not starring, well, fitting in at least. And Phillips back. They were what I took from it. Thanks to the patrons. Thanks to the people for downloading one football. And if you haven't, do it right now. Watch a match reaction. And there'll be more and more content coming. As you can see, the colour's coming back in my face now. I'm becoming a human being again. I'm still knackered, but we're getting used to this parenting thing. And uh, uh, hopefully, uh, there'll be more videos. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being a superstar. And I'll catch you all very, very soon. In a bit, subscribe. Bye-bye.